Salutations, YouTubers and malfactors. We're back here at Stoplogic Motorsports, and I've officially given up on waiting for my truck to get back. So, a few of you that follow me online, uh, my truck has been at uh, Buckley's, or Buckley's Engine and Transmission Repair in Everman for, I don't know, going on two months now. And uh, I just can't take it. I gotta ride. So today, we're not going to the most exciting place on earth to go ride, but getting a little bit of dirt time out at uh, Village Creek MX. And uh, from the last time I rode, I've done a few things to the bike, but I've got a lot more just waiting once all the rest of my stuff comes in. But we've added steg pegs, I put my shoe grips on there, frame grips, and uh, adjusted my recluse a few times. And past that, uh, we've got some exciting modification content coming up. So, yeah, today's ride is not going to be like the most complex stuff. And Village Creek is a very beginner friendly area in the trail section. But at least we get a kind of a feel for what the bike has done so far. Well, I'll catch back up with you guys in a bit. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention I also added a flywheel weight to this bad boy. Salutations, YouTubers and malfactors. Back here at Stop Logic Motorsports and we're out at beautiful Village Creek today. Taking Gigantor out for a walk. Now, uh, my riding will be a little bit rough because, well, I couldn't find my mini compressor. I suspect it's in the bike that, uh, well, been in the shop for two months. And quite honestly, uh, just got to deal with, uh, you know, I think we're rocking about 25 PSI in the uh, tires right now. So, it'll be a little skatey. But, I think we'll still have some fun out here. Given a uh, first ride for these steg pegs. Flywheel, we got the uh, Takamoto aim on map four, even though I'm not really doing any, oh, they call it Enduro Narnar -nar out here. This is kind of like flat, wide open trails. But, I don't know. Saw Jason with the Orion out here. It's always good to see some familiar faces. Let's get underway. I mean, forward, because I'm a shorty. And the reason I don't ride out here a ton is uh, there's some spots where the trailheads uh, intersect with each other with some blind areas. And I nearly center punched a guy out here a few months back during the spring. It's a little better during the fall. Because all the foliage is uh diminished. There we go. So it's easier to spot folks on merges. So probably starting next week we're taking a Gigantor, putting Gigantor on a diet. I'm excited about that content. And I should have my tools and truck back hopefully next week. Well, I need my truck back to get my tools out of storage. And uh, we'll finally do that bar vibration video I've been threatening to do for months. Moving is always kind of a, a chore. These leaves are a little slicky slick. Whoa! Watch your head. I don't have to wait your like lovely garotter. 
guess not a lot of people have been out here on the trails lately. <laughs> a little overgrown. All this stuff smacking on me. Holy it kind of reminds me of the uh, mud ride I had with uh, White Hollywood out at uh, 360. Uh, you didn't hear that uh, Grapevine's finest. I was definitely not out on trails that are not sanctioned. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to adjust these steg pegs forward. They're too far back for me. I know they're not really doing much of anything. So it's not really hard trails, it's just kind of tight. So I mean, for Gigantor, it's a, it's a wee bit of a challenge. I do love the pickup on this bike though. God. Yeah, another merge trailhead. I'm gonna purposely hit all this tight stuff. Kind of get my impressions of, uh, trying to lug around short turns and stuff with the flywheel weight. And it's kind of hard to really test until I find something like really kind of difficult to kill it. But I tell you what, whoa. I can tell it's a little harder to stall. And I like this number four map, this is quite nice. Ooh. I can give this thing a crack of throttle and it doesn't go Yeah, that's my impersonation of the sound of flame out on me. It's saying, I give up on you. I need to check my mirror in. Ditch like that. And it's got a pretty good suspension. I mean, I hate to say this, I kind of like the suspension. Both of them are done up and set almost as the same by uh, LDR out in El Rio. But just something about this uh, Showa Ace Fest. Even the heft of the bike, this show of stuff is like very planted. I'll probably set this bike up a little more plush. Oh goodness. I'll probably set this bike up a little more plush and set up the uh, YZ for Sections of rocks that he likes to do. I should probably do a solid and get 
one of those uh, grips. <laughs> Buddy grips or whatever they have for the front. I mean, I kind of realized I was spoiled with spokes at 7.7 miles single track. But if you've got the itch and you can uh, ride 13 minutes from your house, you might as well take advantage of it. exercise regimen has been helping out Whew. I'm getting some water check this uh, scope this whole situation out <sighs> yeah there's not a whole lot to do trails wise out here and the motocross truck out here is actually legitimately, legitimately difficult and dangerous. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, honestly, without like a uh, difficult track to really test this bike's metal on, I mean, I can tell you that the uh, 508 definitely makes uh, all those tight turns a little easier. I can just kind of skate through and not worry about uh, flaming out. And I was cracking the throttle on purpose to try and get the bike to flame out, so it's a lot harder to flame out once warm. One thing to bear in mind, you gotta let this bike fully warm up before you uh, start really cracking on the throttle because it will just stall on you a bunch. I was thinking about doing further weight loss by getting rid of the uh, thermostat, but honestly, this bike being at operating temperature, it runs better at operating temperature. It's not like the 1990s where you like run your bike as lean as possible and stuff a ton of fans on it and pray that it doesn't go nuclear on you. Things have changed a little bit, and I've had to, you know, come to that realization getting back into riding and racing, but. I like this little Mako 360, quite nice. I have my own thoughts about the uh, set of bar, or about the system versus Fast Flex, which I'm going to probably do kind of a deep dive on all three Flex Bar systems next, uh, next time I'm out. Oh, that looks fun. Yeah, we'll see what goes on. That's why it sounds kind of funny, but I was thinking about uh, losing more weight and getting a KX100 as my race bike. There we go. Oh, 250X, I think? Uh, I'll get back out there and ride in a bit. Oh, let's take a... Take a 
bit of a breakaway for these folks to come back there and see if I can keep pace. I doubt I'm gonna be able to keep pace with these things at street pressure, but. Now, uh, to answer one of the questions I got earlier this week, man, you never ride your YZ anymore. Where is it at? Well, it's still at LDR suspension. I got a uh, top end, well, top end refresh, uh, new crank, uh, tubeless, all sorts of little goodies done to it. And I'm waiting to get it back, but I don't have a truck to go pick it up. So, I've gotten really used to Gigantor in the interim. I mean, not the easiest bike to ride off-road, but it's actually a really good bike. Anyone that's on the fence about a uh, CRF 450 RL, I would I would go ahead and nab one, especially if you're going to do mild trail riding like this. This would be cake. This is cake on this bike. If you got this in a little bit of disposable income, then you know, and you want to do some some racing on it, not a bad not a bad platform. You could do a lot worse. <sighs> All right, I better actually do some riding. Oh, I can't wait though for you guys to see what I'm doing to this bike next. It's gonna be fun. And hopefully helpful. Chill down so I don't get a uh, mouthful of salad.
was the first race I not only raced mini intermediate at, I raced sports for amateur on my 95 uh, KLX. There used to be a ton more trails. I think the property that used to be adjacent to this one uh, sold to be subdivisions. There we go. I figured I'd get you to flame out. track over there of some sort. Yeah, that's a Stacy course. Yeah, they have 
be a cliff mark though. And some people don't just chuck off off in the air. Oh, that smells good. All right. It always takes me a little bit to remember where everything is. I don't come out here a ton. I got organized practice today. Here we go. So this path over this way will take you out to the back of the motocross track. This down here takes you to the river bottom. It's a little deeper than the last couple times I was out here. It's been a bit more rain. But yeah, where those uh, markers were, you actually used to go across there. I think that's subdivision or something now, or parkland or something. But you used to have trails on that side with bulk of them. Hmm. And you would dip in and out of this creek. So yeah, I think they did lose a fair amount of trails out here. There's a couple of spots I see where I could probably get my bike up, but I really don't want to get busted for trespassing, especially since I've got a license plate on the bike. Uh, that'd be foolish. Let's get turned around real quick. But yeah, all up and down this creek there is a place to ride and a little further up there was like some leftover cement culverts and road construction you could go chill on. But yeah, it's kind of interesting how much this place has changed and Mosher Valley no longer exists out in this area. That was the other competing motocross track. I think that place got eminent domain by the city. Do I take the hard way up or do I try and I'm gonna go through the ruts. A little bit of cross training for when I go out to twin hills or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stair steppy stuff under those leaves. All right, so I think Takamoto definitely has achieved the uh, map four being really good for waddly type trails. the beaten path a little bit here. Oh, well, you're too far off the beaten path, you'll get in the swimming path. Oh, goodness. Well, that's certainly a conundrum. I will definitely get stuck riding that ditch. Oh, 
Okay, I like this flywheel weight recluse and everything. Well, that's some soft dirt. Even my dual sport tires just digging right through it. Alrighty. some deep mud. Whoa. Bikey no likey. Dunlop D606's uh, prime element is not snotty mud. medical area up here and it takes you to another set of roads. So this is the top of the motocross track. But yeah, beyond that gate used to be more property out here. There we go, yeah. All that used to be additional trails and everything out here. Now it's like a, a park or whatnot. A church, too. Well, goodness. I'm sorry I'm making such like a long video of me just puttering about here, but I mean, it's kind of the point of having a bike. Putter about. Oh, would you look at that? All right. Uh, just because I see a gate open doesn't mean that I have an open invitation. See, before, stock. You can't crack it open like that to get over stuff. So, the recluse flyweight and uh, Amy CU. If you plan to ride anything of like relative difficulty, the people aren't exaggerating about the usefulness of the mods. Just putting that out there. They're not feeding you a line of stuff to sell product. I think I have my recluse just about right. This is the part where you cross over the track, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back into the mud pit. Goodness, goodness, this is squirrely. Ugh. Well, at least I've had my dose of vegetables today with all this uh, foliage I've been ingesting. Well, I think someone's gonna need a bath when I get home. I'll tell you what. Maybe I do find me something interesting to get mixed up in. Oh, Kenny. Take a little break. I'll uh, give some final thoughts. Maybe a little more trail riding. All right. So we're gonna hit the.
trails for a little more out here. Looks like I'm getting pretty low on battery anyway. <laughs> oh, I love this new flywheel. And, uh, well, heck, take some time enjoying myself a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of yammering at this point because well, let's just get out and ride a bit.
still could drop another 30 pounds. Holy crap. So full disclosure, from the last race, I think it was Whip Heron, I've dropped, oh, 31 pounds, which is making a difference, but I need to be in a little better shape. focus on some strength training and some cardio before the season. So I'm to ride this big boy. You guys okay? Yeah, we're doing these on the we're good. Oh, okay. Well. We let you know we're All right, well, thank you. All right. Oh, well, I've had about all the fun I could have out here. I'm kind of curious about this. This is too tall for me. It looks intriguing. Oh, but anywho, yeah, I know this wasn't the most exciting video, but man, it's been months and I really had to get back on the bike. It was driving me crazy. That's our Stacy Trail. Or Stasic. I really had to get back on a bike, but man, I tell you what. It's not just a bunch of like hokum and stuff. With these uh you know mods of the bike like the ECU and the throttle tamer and all that. It's not just like clever marketing and hokum. It actually does make this bike, uh, it transforms this bike. I mean, really, not any other way to put it. Can't wait to get more weight off of it. I mean, heck, I can loft the front wheel now. Unless I'm really consciously trying, I can't really get this thing to flame out anymore. So yeah. If you don't want to do the exhaust and weight reduction, I mean, you're looking at what? $80 for the throttle tamer, about $700 for the ECU, another $160 if you want the switch. Oh, what else? The Recluse will set you back a pretty penny. The X version will be about $800. The CX, like I've got, is uh, $1,300. Flywheel weight's about $160. So, I mean, you'll be in another two grand on this bike if you want to squeeze a ton of performance and get rid of 90% of the stalling. But honestly, you would do most of that stuff to a KTM EXC 500 or a, you know, a Husqvarna FE 501 or whatever. So, I mean, having ridden both those bikes and then this one, it's a little heavier, it's a little porkier, a little easier to work on, honestly, and it's more comfortable on the road. So, I don't know. 
I'm gonna have fun. I'll get me some kind of faster flowing tracks. This thing is definitely gonna be my fast bike, tra fast track bike. Uh, all my hard enduro stuff, I'm going to put it on the YZ. So for I think I, at one point I am going to take a White Hollywood up on his offer and go hit some gnar on this thing. Uh, I like to punish myself and see what I'm capable of. And the bike's perfectly capable of it. It's the uh, human that's operating it, I think is the weakest link in this equation. Well, anyway, if you like the content, like and subscribe. Uh, if you don't, feel free to criticize me harshly. I accept payments in attaboys and strong language. And uh, have a good one.